Uh, my name is Jeremy. I've lived in Berlin for 13 years, and um, I've worked for Cycling74, the company that makes Max, for 17 years. Um, and I've used Max since 1991. So, um, uh, yeah, I started out as a composer, and then I made a lot of video stuff. And uh, in the meantime, I'm mostly a software developer, but um, I occasionally have uh, a chance to do music or video like uh, tonight at Spectrum, come one, come all. Um, and I'm going to talk today a little bit about uh, Gen, just a really like super fast intro. And then um, I brought a bag of toys, and um, I'm going to show you how you can get your Gen code running on uh, some of this external hardware um, or inside of a plugin um, if you want to get your gen work outside of, um, outside of Max. So if you're new to Max, um, if you're new to Max, um, then you need a lot more information than I'm going to be able to provide right now. But Max is essentially made up. It's a data flow language that lets you connect um, objects together. And the objects are typically C-based um, C bits of code that are wrapped up in a little box inside of Max and um, which do things and you connect them together with these patch cords and it causes stuff to happen. So um, this is a very simple patch. We can also do things like add numbers together um, and then it goes all the way the disadvantage to this uh, what you see here is that it's essentially um, interpreted, right? So you have um, an object that understands messages coming in. The messages are then looked up against a list of messages that this thing knows. Um, the plus object says, yes, I know what a number is. I know what to do when two numbers come in. I add them together and I send a new number out. Um, that's great for doing prototyping work. And it can be very fast and it can be very effective. But um, it is uh, quite a bit slower than doing work in native code, um, such as in um, C. A plus object is not particularly heavy. But if you're doing things like playing back video or doing audio DSP, um, you can very quickly um, end up running out of CPU resources, less so now than 10 years ago. but um, still. So one of the things that we have developed um, over the course of um, the last several years is an object called Gen. Um, Gen tilde is the audio version of that. And um, this was developed by my colleagues Graham Wakefield and Wesley Smith. And what Gen does, it looks just like a max patch inside, but um, Everything that's inside of this patch is um, converted into C++ code um, behind the scenes and just in time compiled into um, basically a code object. And then that object is reloaded and used inside of Max. So um, you're building something using our, graphic, um, our graphical language. But what you're using um, in the end is a native object. So that can be very useful. So we can use Gen um, to do addition as well. Um, but, Gen, but Gen tilde is uh, essentially for DSP. And in particular, it's for doing um, single sample DSP, which is something that you couldn't do in MSP before that, which makes Gen very useful for doing things like designing filters. Um, or um, other types of DSP operations which require um, single sample rather than buffer-based processing. OK. So let's just make a quick gen object that does not much. Um, so let's change this plus to a times. And we can send a sine wave in here. Oops, sorry. Sine wave in here. And let's make a signal that contains a single value between 0 and 1. 
and we can just watch this on a scope. Okay, and as I change this value, the signal is amplified within the gen code or attenuated. So I can also prove that this is generating C++ code by sending the message export code to the gen object and then I will be prompted to drop it somewhere. And this is ugly, but um, but it's essentially legible. Um, and if we look here for the perform function, this is essentially what's happening inside of the gen patcher. This is the actual math that's that's occurring. It tests for inputs and outputs, and then it just runs a loop and performs a multiplication. So that's very cool. Um, most of the time, you don't really need to know anything about that. But um, the point of my talk today is that there are times where you might want to know that, um, particularly if you're interested in taking that C++ code and putting it onto some other device, not using it inside of the gen tilde object um, in the end. So that is the theme of our a little uh, review today um, through the various stages of gen. Um, I'm going to talk about three things. The first, um, I haven't quite decided what order to talk about them in yet, but in no particular order, um, I'm going to look at a little project that we have on GitHub for the Raspberry Pi. Um, and this is still in some amount of uh, development. Um, I just haven't had time to, to work on it very much. Um, but the basic idea is that you can take gen code, load it onto this thing, compile an app, and then run it. And uh, the app, the example app that we have, um, lets you select audio and MIDI inputs and outputs. And um, I'll show an example of how you can uh, assign continuous controller information, um, continuous controller um, values coming in from a MIDI interface to control um, parameters within the gen object. That's the first thing. The second thing is this device. Um, this is a Eurorack module called the OWL from Rebel Technology. This one. Um, and this is essentially um, an ARM Cortex processor on a, um, on a PCB that then has an interface to let you use it uh, within the Eurorack system. Um, I'll just be showing uh, output. I don't have any other modules to do input on this today. But um, we can put gen on this with certain restrictions. This is a very low powered device, um, has very little memory and um, limited uh, CPU resources. So, um, but we have some ways of um, dumbing down the gen code that we export so that it will run within limitations on something like this. And then the third thing I'll show, which is probably most generally useful, um, would be putting Gen into a VST or audio unit plugin, um, which you can then load in uh, live or logic or whatever. I see this is the corner of the PCs. Um, I'm going to be showing everything on, on Mac. I believe that there are, there are Windows versions of all of this, but I'm not a Windows user most of the time, so I can't. Um, it's rare. I can't help you, <laughs> um, but I will do my best. Um, so why don't we actually start with the um, with the plugin export? So here's some information about that. Um, this URL. I'm sorry, that was really unfriendly of me. Um, let me make it a tiny URL.
Okay. So this is the GitHub repos for Cycling74 um, for this project called Gen Plugin Export. And this has been up on our public GitHub for a while. Um, it has also not been updated in a while, but I imagine it will be at some point. And to use it, um, you need that. You need Xcode on your computer. And you need the VST3 SDK, and I put a link for um, a particular version of that SDK here because Steinberg has updated their uh, SDK, I think, two or three times since this project was created, and it's incompatible in the meantime. So you want the old version. I believe this is 3.6.6. .6. Let me double check that. VST3, yeah. The VST3 SDK is for both VST2 oh, and VST3 okay. development. Yeah, but you can um, actually, using this export project, um, build VST3s and load them in Bitwig or um, yeah. any other DAW that supports yeah. them. Okay, so let's take a look at what's in that project. Um, this is required on OS X. Um, if you read the, the README, um, you will find out that you have to put this stuff in a special place inside of your Xcode application bundle, which um, is a little bit lame, but that's how it works currently. Um, it won't compile until you've done that. Otherwise, there's some tools. Um, the VST plugins or audio unit plugins that we generate are based on Juice. Um, Juice is an application framework um, that has um, quite a bit of audio support. Um, but you can use it to develop uh, interfaces as well. And um, the plugins that we're Developing here have default um, interfaces from Juice. And this application, the intro juicer, I'll just open it real quick. But um, this is actually used to um, configure the projects. This isn't very important. This is all done by a script. But um, this basically configures an X Xcode project for you and spits out the Xcode project that you can then use to build. Um, it's a little bit like CMake in that sense, but it's um, for, ju uh, for Juice. Then there's a copy of Juice. There's some basic uh, source code that's required to wrap the, uh, the gen code that we're going to export. And then um, there are the exported projects. So let's open this gen example in Max. <coughs> And this is, I believe, a free verb. So as you can see, gen patches um, are just as annoying to read as max patches. And let's see what, just see what happens. Um, my machine is theoretically set up to run this. Um, so let's give it a try. Um, the gen object has a bunch of attributes. Um, export folder, which tells it where to export the code to. Um, a name, which is um, not only the name of the files that are going to be exported, but also the namespace in C++ that's being used. Um, most of the time, you don't need to change that, but in this case, we do. Um, we have an export script, which uh, allows you to specify a shell script that can be run after export is done. And a couple of arguments are passed into that, um, such as the location of the files that were just exported. So you can use that to, for instance, um, generate uh, Xcode projects and build them. And then here are some arguments to the script. So. When I hit export code here, all of that stuff will be uh, considered. The script will be run, and 
a bunch of stuff will be dumped to the max window any second now. takes a second to build everything. Unless Max is dead, but I don't think it is. There we go. So this is the line we hope to see. Build succeeded. Um, if you scroll back, you can see this is everything that was output from the uh, script that ran. Um, but the only thing we care about at the end is the build succeeded. And if I go into this folder, build results, I was building a VST. And uh, I don't know why the date didn't update, but this is what I just built. So we can actually load this. Okay. So this is free verb. And I can load this plugin and you'll see the plugin name actually changed here. So we substituted a new plugin in in place. And I could load this in uh, live as well. So let's just grab another file and prove that we can do it again. So this is another, hmm, let's do this one. This is a Moog ladder filter. Stop. So I'm just going to grab the gen code for that and substitute it in here. Wait, wait, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> um, paste, replace. Really? It's the best. And there is a shortcut? Yeah. Oh, God. My whole life has been in life. Paste, replace, paste, replace is really cool. Um, paste, replace also works on um, just as a digression. On multiple so, objects, so. Yeah. Nice. Shift N already saved my life uh, for a while. <laughs> this will be wow. Um. So hang on, let me. Shit. All right. I'm gonna have to re-configure all of this stuff, but that's fine. So I want to export. Sorry. Gen plugin export exported code. Does anybody remember what that export name was? I think it was something like C seventy four gen export. Gen plugin. Export 
script. And export script args. Okay. So this is another kind of reverb. This is the, um, oh, sorry, it's a Moog ladder filter, sorry. Um, let's try this one. Argument error in my export script args. So I don't know how they, these were entered. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so this built too. And if I go to our results, oh, this built a this may have built an audio unit no Sorry, demo effect. Um, I'll get that working in a minute, but um, I don't want to slow this down too much. In any case, that is the idea. Um, you can then build either your um, audio unit, your VST, VST3 plugins uh, in that fashion. Um, and I'll get the Moog ladder filter working shortly. Any questions about any of that? at this point. So the nice thing about this is you don't have to know anything about the C++ code. Um, it basically just shoves it into a project, builds it, and, um, and you're done. So the GenPy repos is a little bit different um, because it is an application which runs on the Pi. And um, so this is also a repos on our GitHub. And this project will run not only on the Raspberry Pi, it will also run on your, um, on your laptop. It just requires um, a system that can run um, RT audio, which is basically any Linux system. There might be, I think there's a Windows version as well. Um, so let's take a quick look at what that project looks like in Xcode. It's fairly straightforward. Um, so there's a bunch of headers um, which contain a whole bunch of C++ 11 code, um, which is used to talk to the gen code itself. The actual um, run loop, though, is fairly concise, and it's inside of this RT audio MIDI, MIDI host. And um, in fact, it's right here, um, where the processor process function is called. And this just sends in a vector of samples, um, and it gets a vector of samples back. and um, interleaves, deinterleaves as necessary. Um, and along the way, it can um, do some MIDI processing. So Gen by itself doesn't have any MIDI support. So Gen just does DSP audio. Um, we can hack, however, a means of saying, okay, let's say that our vector size inside the Raspberry Pi is 64 samples. Every 64 samples, see if there's anything in the MIDI buffer. If there is, um, pull it out and do something with it. So basically process MIDI events once every 64 samples, which um, for most things is going to be adequate. Um, so I hacked together um, something to work with this thing. Um, this is a Korg, 
I think it's called the Nano Key or something like that. It's a pretty nice compact controller. Um, and it has eight continuous controller knobs here, numbered 20 to 27 by default. So um, I have just added some code in here to check for controller change messages and map them to gen parameters which are named A through H. So you would just, instead of naming them frequency and um, velocity or whatever, you name your parameters A or B or C. Um, and if the names match, um, so 20 is mapped to A, 21 is mapped to B, um, they will be auto-mapped to the MIDI controller. Um, so it looks like this isn't getting power. Now it is. Okay, so all of that is fairly uninteresting. Um, let's get it running on the, um, on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm connected via Ethernet to my Pi, um, but typically you can do this all over um, a wireless network. So let's see if this just works in the first place. Um, this is audio going to the Pi, and here is sorry, I need the white cable. Oh yeah, thank you. very quiet. Maybe because it's not actually working. Okay, so the input is actually coming in. So there's the so there's our ladder filter, um, which is running on the Raspberry Pi. Um, to make that happen, all I did was um, I took this ladder filter example, I exported the code to gen exported.cpp. Oops, wrong repository. And then I used SCP to push the files up to the Raspberry Pi. So we can do this with a different file um, and see if we can get that working. Um, let's take the, this other reverb, Toro, and I'm pretty sure, oh no, I haven't changed the, the parameters in here. So let's just do that real quick without any regard for what they do. OK. 
Okay. So let's do our export code again. Gen export, gen exported. And now when I go back on the Raspberry Pi and I make, it should actually make something because the files were changed. Something's blowing up here, but <laughs> this is how my entire day has been. Um, <laughs> they would like to have inspector. <sighs> <laughs> <It's quite cool. laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't know what's wrong with that example. Um, if we were to look at the code, we could probably um, try to figure it out, but it's uh, beyond my allotted time um, to try to troubleshoot it. It's not crashing the application, but something is blowing up inside of the filter, um, inside of the reverb. So, all right. Let's move on to a last example. Um, this is then um, something that we're in the process of developing with, um, with Rebel Technology, the people who make this guy. And um, they are in the process. So this thing is pretty cool. Um, but as I mentioned, it's a fairly limited piece of hardware. Um, the one thing um, that they have going for them, or they have several things going for them, but one in particular thing is that... Um, they have online um, a gallery. Uh, that is not what I wanted, a patch gallery, which contains um, not only the patches, which can be sent over web MIDI directly into the device, um, but they also have the source code um, that you can copy and paste um, into other um, applications, or you can um, paste your C++ code from Gen into their window. It will be compiled and then sent via Web MIDI SysX into the device. So that's the way it works right now. Um, what we're in the process of doing with them, though, is developing um, an even nicer workflow, and that involves um, using their online compiler and an API that we can talk to directly from Max. Um, such that we can take a gen patch. So let's make this a little bit smaller and nicer. So this is a car plus strong. Um, physical model, yeah. Okay, and this has already been um, renamed so that the parameters work on the OWL. Um, the parameters on the OWL are A, B, C, D. Um, there's an expression input, which is E, and then there's this, the nose of the OWL is a, um, a push button, and you can name that push and um, send stuff to it as well. 
So in addition, we had all these attributes to Gen that let you set things like export script, export namespace, and stuff like that. And we have this last one called export notifier. And what export notifier is, is it specifies a receive object inside of Max, um, which will get uh, information about the exported code. And then we can trigger stuff inside of Max uh, when the code is exported. So what's going to happen is I'm going to hit export, export code. Um, this patch over here is going to learn about it, and it's going to, um, assuming that my network connection is working, which I just saw it, so it should be, it's going to run this script, and this script doesn't really matter what the script does, but it talks with their server, pushes our code to it, um, pulls a sysx file down from their server, and then um, I'll hold this up, and you'll you'll see, um, you won't see, but everybody else will see. Um, when the nose blinks, that's when the sysx is being sent over, and then this device will be doing something. So let's see. So the lights are on. That's good. That means we're handshaking. Something is happening. Done. And now, so now I can run the gen patch directly on that device. So finally, a success. <laughs> um, that is good. Um, so that's very exciting. It was very uh, tricky getting gen running on something this small um, because of the memory and uh, CPU limitations, but uh, it's very exciting to see that working. Um, the other stuff is all fairly straightforward. Um, it's just a matter of like figuring out where, where the files go and uh, getting it compiling. Um, but that's the basic idea. Um, the other thing um, I wanted to mention, the plugin project um, could be very simply adapted to export um, Xcode projects that you can then um, build apps for um, iPad or iPhone as well. Juice has uh, export targets for those as well. So um, I have an example, but I couldn't um, get it ready in time to show today. Uh, anyway, it wouldn't have worked. But um, the uh, but it's really cool to have some sort of gen patch running and then press a button and then it's on your phone um, and then you can just play it. So. That is that. Are there any uh, questions about the any of that? Like to, to, to export it to iPad, is it also available on your GitHub? It's not on the GitHub, but um, what you can do if you, um, I showed you this thing in the introducer. So um, here, C74 Gen application. I believe that that is already set up to do that. Um, so yeah, this is set up to do an application. Um, so I just haven't tested it. Um, and probably in the time since this was built, um, there are, I think, two new versions of Xcode and um, all kinds of things that you're going to have to change um, for whatever, using um, what are those things called, um, whatever, permission on your, on your iPad to use the microphone. Um, and uh, whatever your uh, certificate and stuff is, you're going to have to change inside of the project. Um, and you'll need to use the most recent Xcode for that. But in general, um, something like that would work. I have a question. Yeah. If it's too unrelated or too long to answer, maybe just later or something. Uh, I got a job in a, a virtual reality startup in Berlin. And I will do all this spatialization of sound, mm -hmm. in our simulation, and all of that. So I was looking for alternatives to make sound, instead of making scripts that trigger loops, I was looking for a true way inside Unity to make procedural or generative audio. And since Max is my dearest uh, friend, I would like to use Max. And that's why I was interested about this function, because uh, the new SDK allows you to use uh, plain C plugins inside the Unity mixer. Yeah. So that's a, that's that's a step. Not just inside of the Unity mixer, but um, you can also use them as components um, yeah. 
Yes. Within within exactly. sound generators and stuff. Exactly. So we've it done is. we've done some experiments in that ah, direction, yeah. um, and we have some stuff that works. Um, but basically, you're going to do exactly. You need to build a like a a shell component that knows how to run the audio code, right? So that's not much different than um, what yeah, we're looking I mean, at with the Gen Pi. It's not so far in that. Yeah, you so just like write a. Uh, the only thing that is working is C sound, which is terribly ugly, mm -hmm. and pure data, which uh, you know. You could you probably know. take the pure data project and adapt it very, uh, very quickly to work with uh, exported Gen code. The pure data project, I yeah, assume that it's using heavy, but um, it yeah. Um, it should be fairly easy to adapt it yeah, to it use is. the. No, with yeah. data it's done. It's already solved. Right, right. You but you could it. take it, compare what Gen is exporting, uh -huh. and then replace the heavy stuff with Gen. Yeah. Not for me, maybe, but, but yeah, it's close. It's possible but yeah. in the near future. Um, so we, yeah, like I said, we've done some experiments and um, like we've we've made some internal videos, uh, uh, just like showing each other know, things you can do. It's very mainstream now. This VR, there is a lot of funding going on. Yeah. Like really crazy fundings and people like me who are there as a creative something and they say okay I have the perfect tool for that because I know Max in five minutes I can set up a generative impact or whatever yeah. in five seconds and instead I mean see sound like lines and ugly stuff from the 90s so yeah so I'm happy to do it yeah um yeah. you probably do it in about a week um so and at some point we may release something, but I don't know when that will be. Shoot. Okay. Any other questions about anything? Ask me anything before I have to sound check. Um, I can't stay very long. If there are any other pressing Macs or uh, related questions. That's disappointing. Um. <laughs> Machine learning. I, I'm having troubles to find some patches, some examples. I found one library, but it's not working on 64 bit. It's called machine learning. Yeah, ML objects, but it's not really. I can't remember. I saw a presentation of some people showing some very good machine learning objects. Um, five years ago, oh. and I don't remember what they were called. Um, but it was more, um, it was things like Markov chains and neural networks and things like yeah. that. Um, so I'm not sure if that's what you're looking for. I can try to. Um, Genetic algorithms, neural networks, I, mean, I can try to find my notes or. Um, I found one uh, repository yeah. in Windows 64. Yeah. Maybe it's me, maybe it's the team. But there's that guy, uh, Raja, I think, on the forum, and they announced their machine learning objects, and people have been complaining for the last two and a half years or something that they're ah, not available on 64-bit window. I think it's the same one. Yeah. Um, this other one, because I think, again, was more low level. But again, in Max, it would be amazing to be able to just fiddle around with some concepts, you know? Like, because, it's, again, the workflow is fast in Max, so yeah. if you confront to do that on open frameworks in C++ or some other, so Max is for the win. Yeah. Actually, there's a um, course at Cadence, do you know Cadence? Oh, yeah. uh -huh. About generative and computational creativity. This is based on Max. I didn't watch it, I just. Based on Max? Yeah, I think it's all about Max Patches. It's by Philippe Pasquier. Ooh. And right now there are four sessions. I'm just checking on it. Might. I think I remember that the description was about. Yeah. Have they got a search here? Because it's like the trendy topics on yeah, other yeah, yeah, programming sure. languages this now. Like it, was, it was all about just based on Max, so it's just a nice. theory and then it's... Uh, yeah. This one. Uh, yes. Philip Pasquier. Mine is not uh, called advanced, but... Okay. But it's also from some... Uh, yeah. it's, ah, it's online. Some yeah, yeah. Mm. It's online, yeah. And it's, it's for free, actually. For free? Uh, this one is, um, yeah, there is a program. You, you got the program log, and I'm, I'm good. So therefore, I don't have the advanced version. Ah, uh, so. But there's also a, a normal, a normal version. Cool. I think they also have, like, a machine learning course there. 
Also, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. of course, there is thousands yeah. of information but about machine yeah. learning, genetic yeah. algorithms, but without getting messed with Java or P5 yeah, JS or yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. I mean, in Max is such a beautiful way to do some other things. Also, with this would be amazing. No? Also, for generative music or or you give to the machine training Bach pieces and after a while you say, okay, play me something like Bach, uh, I'm feeling it. <laughs> you know that. Yeah, but <coughs> this was like how algorithmic composition or something, I don't remember, it's for Max and Pure Data, I don't know if it's the same. Uh, they have all these examples using um, um, yeah, Markov mm. chain or stuff like that. Maybe I saw uh, yeah. This one says students get to practice with the algorithms first hand and develop new generative pieces assignments and projects in max that's mm. yeah that's yeah. the description so i didn't watch uh, to the end yet but maybe that's a good nice thing. yeah you yeah, know there's, there's also the basic uh, course for free which is uh, you, you can't get any credit points and stuff but i think it's full term cool lectures yeah it's really nice yeah cadence.com yeah. yeah yeah they have a lot of good courses um, also, there's also max course Yes. What are you going to do tonight? Uh, tonight I'm doing. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to advertise here. So. So here's the uh, uh, here's the flyer. So I'm doing some video and um, and audio. Um, I'm doing an older piece, which is guaranteed to work. Which I'm really happy that I um, that I decided to uh, pull out the old piece and then. Um, a new thing, uh, which I think is going to be shorter than was intended, but um, for modular hardware um, and video. So um, this is kind of like a single frame of some of the video um, of the new thing.